Hello, today we're going to talk about changing the front brake pad on a 2016 Mercedes S550. A brief overview of what we're going to do today. We're going to jack the car up, we're going to take the wheel off, we're going to take the caliper off, put new brake pad, um, put the caliper back on, put the wheel back on, pump the brakes with the engine off, pump the brakes with the engine on, and basically um, that's basically it. To get started you want to keep safety in mind. Um, you want to have a brick behind each rear wheel and that's so that the car doesn't roll back on you while you're doing work. Um, altogether this should not take you no more than half an hour to 45 minutes max. Everything being equal, you know what you're doing, you have the right tool, it's not minus 20 degrees outside, etc, etc, etc. So let's get started by showing you what you're going to actually need. The brake pad of course, you want to get the brake pad with the part number 008-420. 0220. These are the brake pad sensors. I'm not going to change them because I don't have an indicator in my dash saying change the brake pad. But you can basically tell when your brake pad is low when you step on the brakes. Part number for the brake pad sensor is 231 905 These are the various tools that you're going to need. You're not going to use all of them, but you're going to use some of them. Um, starting from here, this is a star point um, ratchet. You have the half inch ratchet, 3.8 screwdriver. This is basically I got from Home Depot in the garden section. That's going to basically hang my caliper while I work. You have the hammer. You have this little knockout tool for the pins. And um, you have your C-clamp, which is universal. Everybody knows that. But you also have a uh, compressor for the piston, which is superior to the C-clamp. The C-clamp is good for your front brake pads. It's not going to be good for your rear brake pads. Um, when I do the video for that, I'll show the reason why. And of course, we have um, various things that will help us. Of course, it's, it's good that you have your own ratchet set. Um, but let's get started and let's um, jack up this car and show you what needs to be done. First thing that we want to do, we want to pop the hood. And we want to remove this panel. We're going to use a screwdriver to pop this um, open. You got two, you got three, you got four, and then you basically just lift this whole plastic piece and it, and it just um, comes off. All right, so the way you take these off, you just put a screwdriver in here and just twist it like that, and it comes out. And you do the rest for the remaining three. Now that you got that off, this whole panel can just come out. You just lift it up. Take this out. And it comes out. So now you have access to your reservoir. We're going to open up this up slightly. We're going to put the cap back on, but just not tighten it. Just leave it off a bit. And now we can actually um, jack up the car and um, you know show, show you what needs to be done. Okay, we're at the tire. What we're going to use, we're going to use a 17 millimeter socket with, with a, a half inch um, extension. I'm going to put this in here. And what I'm also going to use is this for leverage. For those of you who are having a, a hard time trying to get off your, your bolt, this is what I use. And this will actually give you some kind of leverage. And we can do that with, with all the nuts to come off. And we do that, we don't take the bolts all the way out, we just want enough. So when we jack up the car, um, it's easy just to take the wheel off. Alright, this is the last. So we want to take it all the way out, but just enough to make it loose. So when you jack up the tire, um, everything will be good. And you probably want to get a three-ton jack. These cars are heavy. You want something that's stable and um, secure. Okay, so now that we got the wheel off, we can actually look at the caliper. These are the pins 
that I was talking about earlier where this tool will come in uh, very handy you put it to the tip you get a hammer you bang it out it's gonna push out that way do the same thing for here and the two bolts I don't know if you can actually see the two bolts of socket the socket that's gonna remove that is the 1316 socket which is basically going to go there, you're going to remove that one and the one on the bottom as well if, if you can see it alright so okay so one of the tip that I want to make you want to have something I don't know maybe similar to this to give you leverage we're going to put this over and sometimes your bolts hard to get off and that's why we have stuff like this to actually give you leverage Let's go ahead and all right. I'm gonna do it like that. So now you have leverage to actually pull that 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 bolt down and uh, take it out. All right. So now that that bolt is loose, um, both of them behind, we want to take a tool like this, and we want to take a hammer and bang um, this pin um, out. We actually want to push it so it actually sticks out over there. I'm going to do the same thing for this one as well and then we're going to take the, the caliper off and uh, we'll be exposed to the brake pad. Alright, so notice that the, the pins are um, basically um, here where my, where my finger is at, they're out and um, what we're going to do, we're just going to take the caliper off and we'll be exposed to the brake pad. Alright, so basically I got those two bolts out. The next thing is just to um, pry the caliper and it comes right off. After you remove the bolts, I'm doing everything by, with one hand, so we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so basically that's the caliper. Uh, let me turn it. That's the hook like I was talking about earlier. So all we're going to do, we're going to take the brake pad out. Alright, we're going to remove the pins first and then the brake pad will just slide right out. And here's a better view of the, the two pins sticking out. So let me take my little... Uh, uh, wrench here and just um, pull it out All right, so this is um, what I'm actually talking about using this tool and just uh, Putting it in here and just pulling it straight out and just like the other pin came out the second one will come in And then the brake pad will be loose to take out All right, so basically we have the pads out and this will look like and what we're gonna do now We're gonna take the compression tool and uh, push those uh, pistons back in so they're uh, flat and level so we can assert the uh, new brake pad and put it back on the rotor and that's one of the reason why we left the um, cap off so the fluid can actually push back out a little bit now one of the things that I want to note that this side of the wheel doesn't have um, a uh, wear pad uh, indicator it's on the right hand side and um, the reason why the rotor looked like this because I had used garden hose and actually uh, wet the wheel so it looks actually um, clean but one thing that's very important you probably want to remove these plastic uh, tabs that uh, cover in a hole otherwise you won't be able to get the pin to go through them so let's do them now so this is what the holes actually look like after you remove those plastic uh, protectors and so we have to move the plastic protectors on that brake pad as well alright so after we do that what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the top uh, metal piece back on so you can actually see what it looked like and the metal piece is this piece right here So you'll see what it looked like when it's uh, assembled Okay, and now that you see that it's assembled the only thing we have to do is tap um, That piece and tap that piece with the hammer so it actually sticks out of the hole and then we can put the caliper back on the rotor and actually uh, Put back those two bolts uh, that's attached so we can secure it all right, so basically after you get those two bolts on, everything is assembled. Uh, you got the two pins in that you, you know, you use the hammer on on, uh, on this side to actually um, hit those, those pins inside. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to tighten up the these two bolts. So here I have my, my wrench in here. I just want to make it tight as possible. We do, do the same for the top bolt as well.
all right so now we're done with this um, brake pad and caliper what we're gonna do we're gonna put the wheel back on and we'll um, do the other side the other side the only difference is you have a brake sensor uh, for the sake of time I'm just gonna um, fast forward to the part where we're looking at the brake sensor and um, how we deal with that as well these are what the old brake pad look like as you can see they're kind of low and when you're driving especially on highway you can basically notice that you got to put your foot down um, you know to stop the car so before and that little hole that's normally where the brake sensor would go so um, what we're going to do we're going to show that and uh, see how to actually work and fit into that but one thing I've noticed I almost forgot to mention this is what your your lug nuts will actually look like look like um, basically this is stripped um, I had a um, bubble on the sidewall of my tire and I had to go to the brake shop and yeah they'll get it off with the air machine but guess what they almost strip it so if you wanna do some work yourself at home um, guess what you're gonna have a very difficult time um, changing it because this is almost stripped you can also get the star point um, socket like I showed you earlier um, but suppose you go to the, the brake shop you pull in and you know the person asks you what's the problem oh yeah this tire you know I need to um, need to take it off and before you know vroom, 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 the tire is off and you will go inside to get your your star point socket but the wheel is already off guess what damage already done so to solve that basically what I did I ordered a regular um, lug nut uh, part number is zero zero nine nine zero five three zero seven and this is what it looked like it looks just like this this is universal every um, tie shop has a machine that can actually fit this without actually damaging the thread and it's basically the same size as your as your and I actually got um, this part from the Mercedes-Benz and I told them you know what the problem was so they gave me the 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 one that I'm used to seeing. This is um, the one that can actually fit into your socket uh, set, uh, 17 millimeter, and this is universal. So you don't have to worry about it. every time you go to a tire shop and they strip in your your thing. This is, uh, so I had all of my my lug nut changed to this. So um, just a, a notation. Okay, so now we are on the passenger side of the um, brakes, and a few things that are different. Now we have a sensor which actually goes into the brake pad itself actually goes into the hole which is this little hole right there and a few things in the back that's a little bit different we have the brake sensor line uh, if you come down here there's a special boat it's called a star star um, but we need the tool to actually take it off so we can actually gonna go ahead and do that but let me just show you what the sensor actually it looks like you can basically just come here and just pull the sensor right out the new sensor of course if you had to change the sensor will go into that little slot I'm gonna show you in a minute what it actually looks like so basically if you were to change the sensor this is the position this is what it will actually look like it will actually go into that hole and you would actually push it down into the slot and of course the point of the vehicle where I showed you where where this pulls out and that's basically um, changing the sensor on the on the brake pad. Now to actually remove that special bolt with the, the five point um, um, socket, this is normally where it would go. If you can see my my wrench will actually go there. And that removed the not only the um, the brake pad uh, hose line but also for uh, the sensor as well if you can see. Okay so that that um, Five point uh, socket. Uh, that number is uh, E10, and the same socket we're going to use to remove that the uh, holder of this line. We're going to do that to re remove this as well. So we're going to put it in here. And we're also going to loosen it so that the the center line can actually be loose from the caliper. All right. So we got a complete disassembly of the center line that's disconnected from the caliper so now we're free to take up the caliper and change the brake pad same thing we did on the driver's side 
uh, brakes uh, we can do everything here uh, on the on the passenger side you have a little bit more work but nonetheless um, the end goal is to change the brake pad all right one of the tips um, which is also helpful is that half and socket my head against the the strut of the the air strut of the Mercedes so it's always better to get a adjustable wrench to loosen this top bolt uh, same thing on the driver's side but let's continue and take this caliper off and change the brake pad all right so now we have everything off um, the caliper um, you can see the brake sensor basically we're just going to disassemble use the um, wrench to push the uh, piston back in insert the new brake pad reassemble everything and um, take it from there all right now that we got everything assembled we're going to put the wheel back on the um, brake uh, sensor is on and everything is reassembled and we just put the tire back on what we're going to do after that we'll pump the brakes um, before we start the car and then we'll pump it, the brakes after we start the car just to see if we have to put any more fluid in it then um, that's basically about it all right so after the wheel is back on the car this is the passenger side wheel we'll go ahead we'll open up the uh, hood that's if it's not raining and we'll basically put everything back put back the cover and we'll put back each of the screws um, and tighten everything up oh, one thing that we almost forgot very important we gotta tighten the uh, reservoir so we'll go ahead and tighten it up okay now we put everything back I'm going to put the four screws in, and we're good to go. We, we get inside the car, we'll pump the brakes, the brakes will be tight. Start the car, pump the brakes again, and then that'll be the end of it. But um, from start to finish, that's basically how you change your front brake pad.